What's the difference between calls and puts? That's the question we're going to answer in today's video lesson. Let's get started. When I first started trading over 20 years ago, puts and calls were extremely confusing to me. And so I actually printed out something just like this and I kept it by my computer so I could keep these straight. And while it might seem confusing as a new trader, I promise it'll become second nature after you start trading for just a little while. And just remember, every option strategy is just made up of a combination of buying and selling calls and puts. So if you've heard some of this terminology around different options trading strategies like iron condors, butterflies, calendar spreads, strangles, straddles, and all these different things that you may not be familiar with, just keep in mind all they are is a combination of buying and selling calls and puts. So before we jump into the platform with examples, let's just take a minute to do a quick refresher. When you buy a call, that's bullish, meaning you want the stock to go up. If you're selling calls, that's bearish, meaning you want the stock to go down. With puts, if you're buying puts, that's bearish, meaning you want the stock to go down. And if you're selling puts, that is bullish, meaning you want the stock to go higher. I don't know about you, but I'm a visual learner, so let's jump over to the Thinkorswim platform to give you an actual visible example. In this lesson, we are going to be utilizing SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. If we go to the trade tab in Thinkorswim, that brings up the options chain. Now, again, if you're new to trading, this is all going to seem very confusing, but it's a very simple, defined format that you'll get used to very quickly. Most trading platforms are set up the same way where you have your calls on the left-hand column and your puts are on the right. And this column down the middle, that's what we refer to as the strike price of the options. So let's get started with a couple examples of calls. We are going to both show an example of buying a call and selling a call. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of different options that we can choose from as far as the different strike prices. For this example, we are going to simply choose the strike price that represents the closest at the money options. You can see up here that SPY is trading for around, let's call it $268. So we're just gonna go to the 268 strike price and choose those options. In that case, it's right here. So this is the what we call the bid and the ask. As you can see, as I toggle back and forth, if I hover over the ask, it pops up as buy. If I hover over the bid, it'll pop up as sell. So let's start with buying a call. If I simply just left click on the ask, it'll populate buying a call. What I like to do to give us a visual representation is right click, take it over to the analyze screen, and that's the visual representation of the risk profile graph for buying a call. So like I said, the current price of SPY is about 268 and you can it's actually hiding behind this little red one, but there's a little gold hash mark right behind that and that represents where the current price is trading. So I'm going to use this hash mark to put it right on the current price so we can kind of help keep track of it. Now the market's open, so the price is moving around, but we're just going to use this as an example. So remember back to our first slide when we showed that buying a call is bullish, meaning we want the price of SPY to go up if we buy a call. Now the price in this example is indicated by these numbers down here below. So like I said, the price is trading at about $268. And the pink line on this graph represents the current profit or loss in this trade. Obviously, we haven't even placed the trade yet, so it's hovering right at the zero mark. We have no profit or no loss on the trade yet. And the teal line represents what the profit or loss would be at expiration. And if you keep your eye on this box right here, you'll see as I move my mouse around, you can see that the P&L of both the pink current P&L line and the teal at expiration give you the values of what would be represented by your profit or loss at these different price points. So if you bought this call today and price moved sharply up to 280, you can see that you'd be up about $700 on this trade. 
However, if you held this trade through time and the price made it up to $280, but you were right at expiration, you would actually be down about $180 on this trade. And I'm getting that negative $180 focus on the teal number here. If I hover over the price of 280, you can see at that point I'm down about 180 ish dollars at that point. So why the difference between a move today versus a move at expiration? Well, the difference is because options have time decay, because options expire at some point in the future, they are worth more today than they are as you get closer and closer to expiration. They start to lose value as you get closer to expiration. In fact, that is the major drawback of buying options. For example, if price stayed right where it is today, remember we're paying $1,374 or $1,374 for this option. So if price stayed right here all the way until expiration, you would actually lose $1,374. Now you can make money, but this price has to move higher and it has to do it relatively quick to make money buying a call. And the last thing I wanna point out before we move on to the next example is take a look at this number right here. It's called theta. Theta is one of the Greeks that we use to track theoretical values of options. I'm not gonna to go too deep in this today because it's beyond the scope of this video. However, the one thing I do wanna point out is you'll notice that theta in this case is negative. It's negative 17 and a half dollars. And so what that means is that at the current price level, that option is gonna be losing about $17.5 every day. And remember, that's just representative of a snapshot today. If we use our theoretical calendar and we move through time, you can see that theta accelerates how negative it gets, and you can also see the pink line of the P&L as we move through time, as we get closer to expiration, that theta decays, our option is losing value, and now we have to make a further move in price just to make a profit on this trade. So you can think about it from a standpoint of the quicker you can make a move in your favorite direction, the more money you're gonna make with this strategy. And it's gotta happen quickly because you've got time working against you. Okay, now let's go back to the trade tab and give you an example of selling a call. So this is kind of confusing at first, but you can actually sell a call to open a trade. Most people think of when you're investing or trading that you have to buy low and sell high to profit. In this case, we're actually selling the contract to open and we wanna buy it back for a lower price and keep the difference. So now you're seeing a visual representation of selling a call or what we also call a short call. So I'm going to delete the green box because that was our long call. And I've checked on just this one where you can see that we're selling this and we're using the same strike price, the 268, right at the money. Now what you'll notice is the graph is essentially an inverse of the long call that we just looked at previously. The pink line still represents the current P&L and the teal line still represents your P&L at expiration. If we move our theoretical calendar through time, now you're seeing your P&L line actually go up. When you sell options, when you sell a call, the time decay is actually working in your favor. So the closer and closer it gets to expiration, you can see our profit is actually going up. If price stayed exactly where it is right now, all the way to expiration, you can see we would keep this entire premium of $1,348. And remember, selling calls is bearish. We want the price of the stock to go down. So as you can see, as price were to move down, we're gonna to continue to have a better probability of keeping that entire premium, in this case of $1,348. You'll also notice, and I'll bring my calendar back to today's date, but you'll also notice that the break-even point is way out here. So if we set our price slice, you'll see at entry, we have over a 67% probability of success that we'll make money on this trade, and only a 32% chance that we'll lose money. So selling options is a much higher probability trade. The main difference is that your gains or your potential profit is capped, whereas with a long option, you have theoretically unlimited potential 
profits. The other thing you'll notice if I put the price slice back on the current price is that that theta component that I mentioned before is actually a positive number. So we're actually making $17 every day if price and volatility were to stay exactly where they are. And as we move through time on our theoretical calendar, you can see the profit line moves higher and our theta number accelerates. So we're actually making more and more money each day as we stay in this trade. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a put. I'm gonna delete the call here. I'm gonna go back to the trade tab. I'm gonna go over to the right-hand column as indicated by the puts. We are going to stick with the exact same strike, the 268 strike. We're just gonna look at the examples on the put side. So let's start with the buy. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna analyze this trade. And so what you'll notice is here's the visual representation of buying a put. And remember, when we buy a put, we are bearish. We want the price of the stock to go down. And so what you'll notice is similar to buying a call is that the theta is negative. And so as we move through time, our P and L line is actually going to go down because our option is losing value as we move through time. And the closer we get to expiration, the more value it loses. And so at this point, you have to make a quick move, a bigger move to get into profit territory. If we move our calendar back to today's date, and we set our price slice over here at the break even at expiration, uh, you will also notice that you have about a 60% chance of losing money if you held this to expiration and about a 40% chance of making money if you held this trade all to expiration. So those odds are not in your favor. The trade-off for having a lower probability of profit is that you have an unlimited profit potential. All right, so let's delete that one and we'll come back and show you selling a put. Using the same strike, the 268, we are going to sell this one. You also notice that Thinkorswim indicates selling or collecting a credit with the red bars, whereas buying or paying a debit for something is indicated by the green color. So again, our risk profile graph is basically an inverse of the last one that we looked at. Because remember, if we're selling a put, we are bullish. We want the stock to go higher. And since we're selling, our theta number is positive. So as we move through our theoretical time, you'll see that theta number accelerate because now we have the time decay working in our favor and selling options gives us a higher probability of success. With our hash mark at the break even point, you see in this case, we've got about a 60% probability of making money on the trade uh, and just a 40% probability of losing. Because we have a higher probability of success, you'll see that we do have a cap on the amount of money that we can make on this trade. Just remember, there's always a relationship between risk versus reward. Lower risk, higher probability means lower reward. If you have a lower probability, you might have a higher potential for profit. Now, there are a lot of different strategies and ways that you can utilize the selling and buying of puts and calls. And at Navigation Trading, it's not that we never buy options, but overall, we prefer to be net sellers of options where we have a higher probability of success and we have the time value or the theta component working in our favor so that we're continuing to make more money as we get closer and closer to that expiration date as opposed to losing money. So that concludes our lesson on the difference between calls and puts. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line in our community at community.navigationtrading.com. See you there.